What are we learning that we didn't know before? This is the latest in a series of new observations that are showing very large, massive uh, astronomical objects in the very, very early universe, shortly after the, the Big Bang event. And so these are very large galaxies that have more mass, presumably in stars, that's still an open question uh, for these new observations, but other observations are showing large galaxies that have lots of stars, lots of mass, as well as supermassive black holes that are very large. And, you know, we see these objects all over the place. The uniqueness of these new uh, findings is that we are in the very early universe. And at a time where our current understanding of how galaxies form and how supermassive black holes form is telling us that we don't have enough time after the Big Bang event to have created these very large galaxies and supermassive black holes. And so that's what's surprising. Now, this is an area, both uh, early galaxies and then also this early in the universe, it's a new area, more or less, for astronomy. So we're in discovery phase at the moment. And it shouldn't be surprising that we're gonna find things that you know go against our expectations. And I think that's what it's telling us here, is that we just don't have a full, uh, perfect understanding of how galaxies form and how supermassive black holes form. It's clearly the case because we're surprised that they're so large and that they've been able to become so large in such a short amount of time. There are a couple of ways of, of forming galaxies. They can be formed by small clumps of gas that then develop stars, and eventually those small clumps of gas combine and form a larger galaxy. Uh, or the other extreme is that the large galaxy forms all at once in some way that's not well understood at the moment, but forms already in its large state. Now, intriguingly, we're finding both of these sorts of scenarios in, in the early universe. We still don't know exactly how galaxies are forming. It's just that even if the model of large galaxies forming initially is correct, we still want some time to be able to form those stars, right? Because you have a gas cloud and then the gas cloud forms stars and you build up the numbers of stars over, over time. And according to how we understand those processes, these galaxies are appearing far too early for, uh, for that to have been the case. So again, I think it's just in our understanding of both how galaxies form, you know, which of those two views that I spelled out are the correct one or other ones that we haven't thought about, uh, which, which is correct, and then also how the components of galaxies are forming and how long it's taking them, our understanding is not completely clear. And with these new observations, the more we get, the better our understanding will be and we'll soon have a, an explanation for th this mysterious finding, uh, I, I have no doubt. We just need more observations. And that's the great thing about uh, JWST, more observations will be coming, and our other uh, observatories, such as the ALMA Observatory in Chile. Do you think they're from the better placement of the tools we're using? The situation with these objects, these galaxies in the early universe, uh, is, is twofold. First of all, they're, they're very distant, which means that because of the expansion of the universe, the light that has emitted at the galaxy 13 plus billion years ago, coming out, say, in the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum, has been redshifted into the infrared, where it's visible to James Webb uh, Space Telescope, or further out down into the radio uh, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum where it's observable by, by other, other observatories. And so the distance is causing the redshift of these objects, which is shifting their light into regions where we can uh, observe them. And then we also have new capabilities in those parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. So James Webb Space Telescope observing in the infrared is the premier instrument in that part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And, and so it's seeing new things uh, that we haven't seen before, such as these distant galaxies, because they've been redshifted into them. And it's also seeing old favorites in a different light. How are these results shifting our view of the cosmos? We are, because we're observing in, in a new frequency range, a new wavelength range of the electromagnetic spectrum, we are seeing physical processes in a new way, right? So that's one way that these new instruments 
uh, are enhancing our understanding of the universe. So we're seeing, again, old favorites in, in a different light, uh, no pun intended, but, but that's a absolutely what's happening. And so that allows astronomers to understand the underlying physics in a uh, better way. And then the new capabilities are also opening up opportunities to observe uh, objects that we hadn't anticipated before, or objects that we knew were there, we just hadn't seen them, such as these galaxies. You know, we, we know that there's galaxies in the early universe, it's just we haven't had a good way of observing them until uh, recently, and, and certainly with the addition of the James Webb Space Telescope. So our understanding of the early universe will be enhanced. Uh, our understanding of how galaxies and stars form will be enhanced. I mentioned uh, supermassive black holes. That's a topic that you know, we don't know. They exist, we don't know how they form, how they get so large. And so these sorts of new observations of the very early universe will help us understand those objects as well in addition to just the regular discoveries that, that we can make in astronomy, that is fundamental physics, how do physical processes work, how do the laws of nature work, and from, from those observations we get a better understanding of everything that's around us in the universe, including things that are here on Earth. How do you feel when these new results come out, the upset version of things that we so it's it's mixed emotion. But the first emotion is 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 that it's a fantastic thing, right? I mean, that's why I became an astronomer. We are still learning a lot about the universe. Uh, we know a lot, but there's a lot that we don't know. So every day, every every observation gives us another piece of the puzzle about how uh, that specific astronomical object works, but also how the universe works. And so that's that's fabulous, right? On the other on the other side, it's just a small small part of the emotions are things that we find that aren't behaving as we expect them to. But we like to think that we understand the laws of nature uh, reasonably well. We know intellectually that we don't know the laws of nature completely, but when we see things that don't go the way we think they should, that is, you know, can be problematic, right? Because it might mean that there are new laws of nature that we hadn't contemplated that we need to to dig and, and, and discover. It could mean that our understanding of the laws of nature is flawed in some way. So there's a little bit of that, but, but more importantly, I think, and, and what drives most astronomers, certainly me, is this fact that we're making discoveries of objects that we had never expected. And that's fantastic, right? There's something out there that we never even contemplated is out there, and now we need to explain it. It's another uh, mystery that needs to be solved. And that's the fantastic thing about astronomy in general, and what happens when we point new instruments at a different part of the sky. We make these discoveries, and we're making them every day. And with, through them, we're learning uh, much more about the universe.